Do you need to be gluten-free if you have Hashimoto's? That's the question we're gonna answer today. Okay, so this is a controversial subject and you can find studies and opinions on both sides of the argument for this one. However, I wanna give you my personal reasons why I believe that if you have autoimmune thyroid disease or Hashimoto's, you should keep gluten out of your diet. I'm gonna pop some slides up here, which I hope is going to explain this in a very not technical way. <laughs> It's a very technical, deep subject, but I'm going to try to bring some levity to it and make it a lot easier to understand. Okay, I'm down here now. <laughs> so to understand this, I'm going to start with your gut because I think it's important to understand your gut and how this plays into it to understand the reaction that gluten can have. In your gut, you have thousands and thousands of these finger-like little projections called villi. They help to shuttle food particles and pathogens and all kinds of stuff through your gut here is a cartoon version of this, but you can see all of the like various villi, microvilli, all of that are closely buttered up together. And underneath that, you have your bloodstream, which can help shuttle nutrients to where it needs to go. And then you also have immune cells underneath these villi as well. This is your gut barrier and the immune cells are underneath it and they're going to help look for things that shouldn't be in your body. In a healthy gut, you're gonna have things like viruses and pathogens. Hopefully you don't have a whole entire taco, but undigested food proteins, all the stuff that's going through your gut, and it's gonna just get shuttled through. And then there's gonna be various mechanisms that help to take some of the nutrients through and to put that down through the bloodstream, and then also to check to make sure that you don't have any sort of really bad pathogens coming into your body. Unfortunately, sometimes the gut gets damaged and you have holes inside of the gut lining. And this is colloquially called leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability. And this is not a great thing because this exposes your, basically the inside of your body to the outside which is all of the stuff going through your digestive system. And that can be things like the pathogens and viruses, but also the food proteins. And that's not great because this layer is not really supposed to come in contact with entire food proteins or even viruses. So when it does, it can create antibodies, which is a great thing because that's going to help to remember that there is a problem in your body. But it also causes a huge alert for your whole entire system. It's chronic system-wide inflammatory and immune response, which is not a great thing because that, if it keeps happening, can lead to chronic inflammation. Now, inflammation is a good thing at first. It's a response to harmful stimuli. So if you fall and get a cut, inflammation's going to be the, like, the thing, the first responder that's really gonna help to repair your skin. But when you have it for a long time and it becomes system wide, that's where we get into the danger zone and things like cancer and cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes and autoimmunity and all of these things can happen. And then autoimmune tissue attacks, if you already have them, can go unchecked because your immune system's off fighting all of these little fires all over your body and it can't really care that your system's gone amok and started attacking itself. It just doesn't have the capacity to care. And chronic inflammation by itself can cause symptoms like fatigue, pain, depression, anxiety, brain fog, recurring infections, bloating, rashes, joint stiffness, and so much more. So your symptoms might not even be from your thyroid. It could just be from inflammation. Or your chronic inflammation might be preventing your thyroid hormones from getting to your cells. So you might be producing enough thyroid hormone, or you might be taking it in via like levothyroxine or synthroid, but it's not actually getting from your thyroid to your cells because chronic inflammation is stopping it. Where does gluten play into all of this? Why does all of this matter? Well, everything living is made up of proteins, but there are only so many protein combinations. Some protein structures are common between all forms of life. So for example, we share approximately 70% of the same DNA as an earthworm. Other living things that can share protein structures are things like infections, the plants we eat, tissues in our body, so here's an example, protein structure of gluten, gliadin to be specific, and thyroid tissue protein structure to an antibody, they have a very close protein structure so that they might actually look exactly the same to an antibody. In a healthy immune system, it wouldn't matter because the antibody knows not to signal attack on your thyroid tissue. It would only be concerned with the gluten proteins because it's foreign. And in a healthy immune system, one without chronic inflammation or leaky gut, 
If an antibody formed against your thyroid, it would get stopped before it was able to signal an attack on thyroid tissue because your body's not off fighting all of those little fires. It knows, okay, whoops, we shouldn't be attacking our own tissue. Stop that. But in a chronically inflamed system that has leaky gut and the genes for Hashimoto's, your immune system is so preoccupied that these antibodies do not get stopped. So if you have the genes for Hashimoto's, you might already be making antibodies against thyroid tissue that don't get stopped. And then if you eat gluten, you may make antibodies against gluten. And then because gluten and thyroid tissue look so similar, you may make antibodies against gluten and then autoantibodies, which are antibodies against self, against thyroid tissue and they won't get stopped. So your thyroid tissue gets destroyed because you ate gluten. Does this happen to everybody? No, or we don't know. But it's a really important thing to know that it could happen. You don't want to unwittingly be causing thyroid tissue damage every time you eat. This can also happen with other proteins like the protein casein in dairy or zine in corn and various other ones. But if you don't have a leaky gut, these may not be as problematic. And I'll show you why in a second. Again, this might not be a problem for you. It depends on a bunch of factors, your genes, your gut health, your stress levels, and so much more. But what if it is? That's why I recommend playing safe and removing gluten if it's going to be causing a problem with your thyroid. A question I get a lot is, does this only happen with people with celiac disease? Because, well, only people with celiac disease would be making antibodies against gluten, right? Not necessarily. When you have a leaky gut and anything touches this immune layer underneath the gut lining, it can produce antibodies against anything. So strawberries, for example, could be something that could cause problems and cause antibodies. And I can always tell if somebody has leaky gut because they'll light up a food sensitivity test like this, like a Christmas tree, right? This is a food sensitivity test of one of my clients before she started any sort of healing diet. And you can see it. there's so many things on here like banana and avocado and mushroom and tea, like just all kinds of stuff that you would never expect to have antibodies against. But this is a clear indicator that this person has leaky gut. After she did the autoimmune protocol or AIP diet for three months, she retested and barely any of these were being lit up anymore with antibodies. So she's able to eat them now. So it just goes to show that anything can create antibodies. It doesn't have to be somebody that just has celiac disease. So you heal a leaky gut and then something that was a problem can then go through your gut and not cause a problem. But this is where gluten is different than everything else. Gluten, when it goes through your intestines, actually can trigger a protein called zonulin that causes these little tight junctions, these little things that are buttered up together to come apart. So that way the gluten can just come down here and get into your gut an immune layer without like, it's just basically an invitation like, hey, open the door for me, please. And it just opens up. So it can get down here into this immune layer, whether or not you have leaky gut. If you have the healthiest gut alive, <laughs> if it produces zonulin, it just gets right down here. Now, another way are these million dollar words, retrotranscytosis or lysosomal transport. You don't need to know these. I just have them up there in case you want to research more. But the essential idea, it's a very technical process, is that gluten proteins can get transported from the gut inside to your body, to the immune layer, just because it kind of almost tricks the body into letting it go into the gut layer. It's a complicated process, but just know that that can happen as well. So there's these two mechanisms. The zonulin opens up the door, and then this way just shuttles the proteins right directly into your immune layer. So these methods can cause gluten to get into your system and cause a chronic system-wide inflammatory and immune response, or even cause your thyroid tissue to be destroyed without even having that leaky gut. When you have leaky gut, it's really bad. And when you don't have leaky gut, it still can cause a problem. Hence, if you do have autoimmune thyroid disease or Hashimoto's, it may really be in your best interest to not include gluten in your diet. So it really is a personal decision, but these are the reasons why I don't usually like my clients eating gluten and why many of them decide not to. And it could be the reason why if you do have Hashimoto's, 
you are experiencing a lot of symptoms despite being on medication. Now, if you do a healing elimination diet, a lot of times you can tolerate more of all of these different kinds of proteins that may cause this inflammatory response, and maybe your inflammation and your immune response is not going to be as drastic. But unfortunately, with gluten, it does have those mechanisms to kind of sneak by the little checks and balances. So, yeah, I... But hopefully I explained it in a way that wasn't too technical <laughs> and uh, that you understand now why gluten can be a problem for your thyroid.